you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, My So-Called Healthy Life. And today I'm in my office, it's a beautiful Halloween autumn day outside, and I have three assistants with me today. <laughs> so I want to read um, a meditation today out of a book that I have in my office. It's one of my favorite books, Daily Affirmations for Forgiving and Moving On, Powerful Inspirations for Personal Change. And um, the meditation today, I think, is so profound. I feel like I've had this conversation with a lot of people recently, so I wanted to read it and then talk to you guys um, about just my feelings on it and what I've learned through the years. So today's is about self-respect. Today, I realize that self-respect is pivotal to a healthy and happy personality. When I have self-respect, I have the ability to say no. When I have boundaries and can say no, then and only then can I really say yes. When I can say yes, the world opens up to me. I can do what is appropriate and needed in a situation because I am not tied up in impressing other people or proving anything to them. When I have self-respect, I silently let others know how I expect to be treated. When I am with someone who cares about themselves, we both feel more comfortable. Other people tend to see me as I see myself. Today, I feel I am entitled to my self-respect. I feel good about myself. Be a friend to thyself and others will be so too. Thomas Fuller. So I think this is a really interesting conversation to have because I think it's really about um, are you standing up and having self-respect and setting boundaries for yourself or are you doing that because you feel like you're a doormat, if that makes sense. And I think the word doormat is an interesting word, you know, like, um, I've heard through years, you know, I've, I've even felt it myself, you know, like, do you have that person that's always consistently like 20 to 30 minutes late to everything? And then like every time they do it, they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. And the kids had to go here and I was running late. And you're like, oh, it's okay. It's not a problem. Right. But then you go home to your partner or your other friend and you go, God, they were 30 minutes late again. You complain about it. Right. Or, you know, it's like your supervisor asks you to work a holiday and they ask you to work every holiday and you're like, oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. You know, because you become that it's okay, Joe kind of person. Do you know what I mean? That yes, man you become that person or yes woman and you over time become a little resentful and a little angry but you turn that into I feel like I'm a doormat well I felt like that for a long period of my life right and what I didn't really realize was that I was the one that was setting the boundaries and the limits for how I was treated and how people perceived me when maybe how people perceived me was Peter really doesn't care if I run late you know he's doing something himself or Peter really doesn't mind working holidays he always agrees to work holidays because I never set boundaries and limits for myself and so a lot of times we read into these situations and we script these conversations in our head that we never end up having so the other person doesn't really know how we truly feel. And a lot of times we're afraid to do that because we're afraid to set let limits and boundaries because if I set a limit or a boundary with somebody and say, you know, you always ask me to work a holiday and it's, and it's not that I mind working a holiday here and there, but I'm always the one asked to work a holiday and I would kind of like it to be somebody else every once in a while. Or... You know, like, hey, you're consistently 20 to minute, 30 minutes late every time we eat. You know, like, when you're late, what that says is that you think your time is more valuable than mine. And, you know, I've been sitting here for 30 minutes waiting for you because I love having dinner with you, but I don't want to sit by myself for 30 minutes. I think a lot of times our fear is that the response will not be, oh, wow, I totally hear what you're saying. It won't happen again. And they learn from it and change. We, that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? But typically the response is, why are you being a bitch? Like, or you never told me that before. I would have treated you. I mean, it's always a defensive response, right? So because we don't like confrontation, because we don't want arguing, we just don't say anything at all. And therefore, it goes to the second part of this, which I firmly believe and I've believed over time, is that, and a lot of people won't like this, and thinking of yourself as a, you know, a doormat or a victim or whatever, and I don't mean like victim of like deep-seated abuse. I'm talking about victimization in situations like this, okay? Liter like light kind of stuff, like not big deal stuff is that you have to lay down to get walked over. So if you have the friend that's always late, or you have the family member that's always late, or if you have a sibling that never wants to help out with mom and it's always you, and you have the supervisor that work, asks you to work every holiday, right? Or you know if you have the partner that like never cooks dinner or cleans the dishes and it's always your responsibility to do everything, if you don't ever stand up for yourself and say something out of self-respect, right? And you don't have to say it in an asinine way, you don't have to say it in a nasty way, you can say, hey, like I've been cooking dinners here for five years, okay, and cleaning up afterwards. I don't really mind, but I would love if you would maybe help out two nights a week and do something as well. Order a pizza, put the dishes away, whatever, right? 
or sit down and have that conversation with the supervisor and say, hey, listen, like, it's not that I don't like working the holidays, but could we maybe ask some other people too so it doesn't have to always be me? You know, and you start standing up for yourself. What you'll realize over time is that that relationship you have with that person is e either not as important to them, which is painful to us, because then what we have to realize is maybe I shouldn't be so invested in this relationship that I'm not standing up for myself because they won't hear what you have to say and change or they will hear what you have to say and they will change and the relationship will grow because what they'll be able to do is start setting boundaries and limits with you as well if that makes sense um you know i used to in this place that i worked i would say no a lot and then i became the yes man and i would say yes a lot and I remember having this conversation with this woman that I really respected that I worked with. And I said, you know, you seem to never have to work horrible holidays or whatever. You seem to always just do what you want to do. And she goes, yeah. And I go, how did you get there? And she goes, I saved my no's and I saved my yeses. And I go, what do you mean? And she goes, I don't agree to everything and I don't say no to everything. And she goes, you have to balance it out. You have to choose what's really important to you. So... If Christmas Eve you don't want to work because that's your really important family dinner, then don't work and set that boundary. But then be willing to come in for a few hours on Christmas if that's not as important to you, if that makes sense. And that's a way that you grow respect. The other thing I think is in physical manifestations of how we talk to people and how we sit. You know, if I sit here like when I'm talking to you and I'm sitting like this and I'm like looking down and I'm like, well... I mean, self-respect is very important, and it's hard sometimes for us to have self-respect, and my hair's hanging in my face, and I don't look very good, versus me sitting up and saying, I think it's very important. If you notice on my videos, I sit like this. It's very important for us to have self-respect for ourselves. If we walk into a room with our held, held, uh, held up high, because today we're people of character, see? Today we're people of character that choose to have other people view us as people of character, Watch next time you're sitting in a room and people are walking in, whether you're in a doctor's office, a 12-step meeting, you know, a school function or whatever, and watch people that walk in with their head held down and watch people that walk in like this with their head held rise or their head, you know, held up and see your perception of them. Do you perceive, which people do you perceive as confident and have strong self-respect? And which people do you perceive as being sad and down and lacking self-concept and self-respect? Because the way that we present ourselves physically has a lot to do with the way that we present ourselves emotionally and mentally. So if we start physically forcing ourselves to stand up straight, to say, I will be respected because I'm a person that deserves respect. But I also believe that you have to give respect to receive respect. When I worked with teenagers for years and years and years, okay, one of the things that they would always say to me is, you have to give me respect first before I'll give it to you. And I'd say, that's fine. I have no problem with it. The process has to start somewhere. So if you need me to respect you, I respect you all day long. Tell me what you have to say. I'll respect that. Let's start it. And they'd just look at me like I was a crazy adult. They'd be like, no adult has ever said they respect me. Why not? You're a human being. You deserve respect too. We all deserve respect from each other. So I think it starts with ourselves and how we feel about ourselves. And sometimes you have to fake it till you make it. Sometimes you have to walk into a room and be like, yes, baby, I am here. And you may inside feel like, I feel like a piece of shit, but yes, baby, I am here. And you have to fake it a little bit, right? And over time, you'll start to believe in yourself more. And that's what's truly important. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.